Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to take a look at a pragmatic approach of how we can set up background jobs in our .NET Core applications. My name is Vasily Lenink and you're watching the .NET architecture series where we are building modular monolith from scratch using industry's best practices. .NET Core historically had a really nice support for running background jobs using the I hosted service interface and all the plumbing code around it. However, Tools and libraries like Quartz, like Hangfire, will take it one notch higher because it will be easier to use and easier to set up. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can set up Hangfire with both Postgres SQL and SQL Server SQL. Why both? Because this system is using Postgres in the background and the Postgres setup is a little bit different from the Azure SQL database setup. So for running Hangfire, we're going to need a couple of Nougat packages and I have already pre-added them. So we're going to take a look at directory packages props and let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can see better. We basically have Hangfire ASP.NET Core and Hangfire Postgres SQL. So these two packages are the one that we're going to use. Now for the main implementation, we're going to go to our utilities folder over here and we have a background jobs installer. Now if I open it, we have a single method, the add background jobs and let me drop these two on separate lines. So we, it's an extension method to the service collection. The first thing that we're going to do is basically retrieve a connection string from our app settings and from our configuration. Then we're going to create a connection factory to our PostgreSQL database. Finally, we're going to set up the services by running services.addHangFire and providing a custom customization to HangFire, which is going to use PostgreSQL storage with the provided connection string and with the connection factory. This is basically everything you will need in order to run HangFire and to create background jobs. Obviously, we're going to need the database that you're going to connect and the connection string itself. But this setup will get you running since it will already create the tables that it needs in a separate schema and store all the data over there. A small issue that I've always missed initially was setting the job storage. In our case, it will be the PostgreSQL storage with the provided connection factory. Finally, over here, we can see that we have services at hangfire server. What we say over here is basically that we want our current application, the one that is setting up this add backgrounds jobs method to act as a hangfire server that will process and run the background jobs. If you have some lightweight jobs running in the background, this is an okayish approach. However, if you have some heavy background processing that requires a lot of resources like CPU, like memory, you don't want your API or your main application, your master application to run those hardcore operations, but you want to offload those to some console applications that will run in the background and do the heavy work behind the scenes. Now, with that said, all you need to do is basically add the background jobs inside the program.cs to the DI container and to profit from the Hangfire dashboard, which you are getting as a built-in solution inside Hangfire. Now for the background jobs and how we can install those pretty easily, I should go to application registry service. And over here, I have added a small statistic service that is basically just a POC with some injected application DB context inside it. It's not really a background jobs that you would normally run, but it basically just covers the main pain point I had with IWAP hosted services so many years ago with injecting services into it when I was first starting it out. To set up this method as a background job, we're going to go to our infrastructure and to our registry installer. And over here, we need these three lines of code like recurring job, add or update. Then we need to specify a unique ID for our recurring job. In our case, it's basically statistics. Then we are going to build the service provider, get the required service, which is in our case, statistic service and invoke this one set method. And finally, you need to provide some form of cron expression. In our case, it's minutely. However, if I remember correctly, you can just specify a custom cron expression that you can get from the I configuration. I'm going to return to my previous implementation since I don't really fancy custom cron expressions without cron top guru. A small catch I've realized just now, 
we're gonna have an issue over here to the recurring job adder update since I have added the add background jobs to the end of my DI container. However, I will need to set it up a little bit on top. So the background jobs is con the, sorry, the job storage dot current is configured before we set up any kind of recurring job in the background. So with this done, we should be ready to debug our system and take a look at the results. And as you can see, we have already hit our breakpoint for the statistic service. So we basically have an instance of our application DB context. If I skip over this breakpoint, we can see that we have our application over here with all the data inside it. And basically this is everything you need to do in order to set up and run some background jobs inside your application. I'm gonna skip these two breakpoints over here, minimize this and get my second window over. So over here, if we now go to our hang fire job, we can see in real time the history graph of our succeeded jobs, basically a list of our recurring jobs that we have configured, the list of service, one is right now active and the second one had a last heartbeat four minutes ago, which basically means that I've run once my application in the background before. What we can do right now is basically trigger these statistics once again before the, its time comes in. So I can just trigger now and as you can see, it just runs the background job on demand. Yeah, so if we go back, we can see that we have five succeeded jobs right now. With that said, basically that's all the implementation that you need to set up in order to run it with Postgres. Now let me go over here and to another application. And over here we have the background jobs installer, which is basically a setup with SQL Server. So it's really pretty similar to how it was before. We get the connection string, we add the hang fire, we set the compatibility level. Then we're gonna use the SQL Server storage with this connection string, setting up the job storage to current, adding the hang fire server. And over here we have the use jobs dashboard, which will, is basically a wrapper around hang fire dashboard. One thing that is to mention is basically the hang fire dashboard might have some form of sensitive data for you. So you might want to have only authorized users access the dashboard. For that, you're gonna need to set up authorization filters, which is pretty easy to do some stuff. So you have the my authorization filter, which will inherit from iDashboard authorization filter, where you have access to the HTTP context. And then based on this context, you can retrieve some data about the user that is gonna access the dashboard. To set up the usage of this authorization filter, you will want to configure the use dashboard in a fashion like this. So you might set up the path match and then you're gonna need to provide some dashboard options. And then you will set up the authorization with a new array of authorization filters that are required for accessing the dashboard. So yeah, this is a pretty fast setup for running background jobs pragmatically inside your systems. It's an easy three lines of code after you have done all the plumbing code to run a new background job inside your system. If you like this kind of content, leave a like, a comment and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you're notified whenever a new video pops up. And yeah, with that said, see you next time.